Hi guys, welcome to my NASDAQ channel. Today's video is going to talk about the IPv6. We all know IPv6 is the future current world we are migrating. It's very slow migration, but uh, definitely we are going there. There's lots of benefits. This video is not talking about how IPv6 works and how good it is. We're going to configure EC2 instance with IPv6 address in it. In the cloud, I already have IPv6 instance running. I have this IPv6 IP address in the cloud. It's alive. I can ping it. There's a 0% loss. 0 0.22 millisecond is so fast in the cloud. As a test machine, this is going to be my test machine, and I'm going to create in the instance in the EC2 and configure it with IPv6. We can connect to this test IPv6 VPS, and we can know the configuration steps. So the first thing to config IPv6 for your EC2 instance is you need to go to VPC. You need to assign IPv6 segment. So I already have a VPC here, default VPC. What you can do is you can see this IPv4 segment, 172.31.0.0.16. And I used to have a CIDR IPv6 segment, but I already disassociated. To get your IPv6 segment for your VPC, you need to go to Edit CIDRS. You just need to add a new IPv6 CIDR. It will automatically associate one segment for you. It's slash 56. It's more than enough to use. And then you can close. Now you have IPv6 segment. Once you got your IPv6 segment for your VPC, you need to go to subnet. For example, if we want to use in the first subnet, then we need to do the same thing added IPv6 segment. You can add the IPv6 sec CIDR here. What you can do, you can put a number here to distinguish with other segment. You're going to allot it to other subnet. This is slash 64. Save. You have a more segment. You want to do that. You can create another segment small segment for other subnet. Same as I'm doing here. 0, 02. For your third subnet, you can assign 0, 03 segment. So for all of your subnet, have IPv6 segment now. But one more thing you need to do, you need to create a route. You need to create the static route. By default, IPv6 will not go anywhere. You need to have a static route to telling your IPv6 packet to go into a default gateway. It is what we're going to do here. You're going to add the default IPv6 route to your Internet Gateway. Back to more specifically, it's an Internet Gateway, same as your IPv4 default gateway. Save route. The last step is your firewall. By default, you already have an outbound route to allow IPv6 to go to internet. Let's verify that. But you may want to have an inbound pin IPv6 route to be created. 
on your EC2 dashboard, go to Security Group. Find out your security group you are using for your VPC. You may have multiple ones, but find the one you're going to use. For the outbound, you can see by default they already have IPv4 allowed any any and IPv6 allowed any any to go outbound. But the inbound, we only have IPv4 to come in. So what we can do is we can add IPv6 allow all ICMP IPv6 to come in. Source is any. This gonna allow ICMP coming to pin our IPv6 address from the internet. That's all steps we need to do. VPC to assign VPC to associate uh, IPv6 segment and then in the subnet assign a subsegment to your each subnet. And the third step is create a static route for your IPv6 packet. The fourth step is firewall allow inbound. By default, outbound is already allowed. Now we're going to create our EC2 instance. Launch instances. We're going to use our Ubuntu server 18.04 version. We're going to use our t3.micro type instance. Next. In here, now it's a VPC selection. So we only have one VPC, that's the default one. And then we have subnet. You can choose either of them because we already assigned IPv6 sub subnet for each one. So we should be okay. We choose 1A right now. Here you can see auto assign public IP by default is enabled, but for the auto assign IPv6 IP is not enabled by default. We're going to do it manually. You need to change this to get your Ubuntu instance DHCP IP address, basically. DHCP version 6 IP address. That's the only thing you need to change here. Then we can go to the next step. Storage is standard. We can leave it there. And we don't need a text for this lab. We already have SSH being allowed for IPv4 and IPv6. So this has been allowed. This is the lure we're going to create it. Launch. I'm going to choose the existing key I'm using. After a couple of seconds waiting, our EC2 instance has been launched. You will see you got a public IP and also you have IPv6 IP address. If you didn't do the previous steps, you won't get this IPv6 IP address. That's great. So from my machine, I'm going to create a SSH session. And then we're going to test this IPv6 IP using my test machine in the cloud. This one. We're going to, they're going to talk to each other, basically. We're going to test that. So this is our public IPv4 address. We're going to use in that to connect into it from my machine. That's the one. I already configured my SSH client to use in predefined SSH key to log in. So we can directly log in as root. First thing we want to check the IP address. What we got? For the interface ES5, we have internal IP and also we have two IPv6 IP. This is the local IPv6 IP address and the last one we got from DHCP IPv6 IP address. 
So now we can test it. If we can ping this IP from a cloud, we can use in this pin IPv6 website to try that. Since so it's got a lost, it doesn't work, then we need to troubleshoot on it. This must be have one step we missed from somewhere. Security groups. As you can see, we have three security groups. Previously, we only have two. While we are creating our instance, it's automatically create a security group for ourselves. We didn't pick the right one. That's the reason we need to change our instance security group to the one we're using here. We have custom ICMP rule created. Let's go to EC2 dashboard, go to instance, security, security groups. We can add it, make it much more simple. Just add one rule here, allow any, save the rules. Now we can try ping it again. It's working now. So based on our testing, we can pin our EC2 IPv6 address right now. We also can do more. We can pin our test VPS. It's 27 milliseconds, not that bad. We also can SSH to it. It's going to ask you username and password. Username will be root. Password is the one for your VPS. We are logged in our remote IPv6. VPX. We also can pin back. Either way it works. SSH won't work. We have to use private key. So that's pretty much everything I'm going to show you in my list IPv6 video. Thank you for watching.